Hey what is up guys, welcome to another video. In this video I'll be going over a couple of difficult probability problems and there's a third one which I'll actually leave open for you to answer in the comments. So let's get straight into it. The first question says the table shows some information about some counters in a bag and here this is a table where the color is red, green, blue or yellow and the number of counters is 3 or x or 2x or 3x minus 1. And the question goes on, a counter is chosen at random. The probability of choosing a red counter or a green counter is 0.22. Work out the probability of choosing a yellow counter. Okay, they don't tell you how many counters there are in total, uh, but we can work it out using this probability and by finding an expression for the total number of counters. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is to write this as an expression for the total number of counters. Uh, so we can say the total counters will be all of these things added up. So 3 plus x plus 2x plus 3x minus 1. And if I simplify this, uh, 3 uh, combined like terms, so 3 minus 1, that's 2. And x plus 2x plus 3x, that's plus 6x. So now I have an expression for the total number of counters. And then I want to, and then what I can do is to use this probability to work out x. So we, so it says that the probability of choosing a red counter or a green counter is 0.22, and that can be written as the probability of a red or a green. And to work out the probability of a red counter, we would have to do the number of red counters, which is three, divided by the total number of counters, which is two plus six x. So I hope you can see how I'm getting that probability. I've just taken the number of counters divided by the total. And then we could also have a green counter. And when we say or, remember we add the probabilities. So they're not happening at the same time. We have this one or this one, so we add them. And the probability of getting a green counter is x on the total number of counters, which is 2 plus 6x. And remember in the question they tell us this equals 0.22. Now I'm going to find this easier to solve if I actually write this as a fraction. Uh, so 0.22, that could be written as 22 over 100. Or I could simplify that. 22 over 100, if I divide both by 2, I get 11 over 50. Uh, so I can say all of this equals 11 over 50. Now I have an equation with one unknown, which is x and I can go ahead and solve for x. So let's start simplifying this. Firstly, I want to combine these fractions. So I can say that three plus x divided by two plus six x equals 11 on 50. Now remember, I can't say this is three x. This, this must stay as three plus x. But because I have the same denominator, I can actually add those fractions together. And now I have three, three plus x on two plus six x equals 11 on 50. I have two fractions, and when you have two fractions equal to each other, you can cross multiply. So you multiply the right-hand side by this denominator and multiply the left-hand side by this denominator. So the next line will look like 50 times 3 plus x equals 11 times 2 plus 6x. And then what I can go ahead and do is um, expand the brackets. So 5 times 3, that's 150. 5 times x, that's 50x, sorry, 50 times x, and then 11 times 2, that's 22, and 11 times 6, that's 66x. And let's keep simplifying. So I need to subtract that 22 from the left hand side, 150 minus 22, that's 128, and minus that 50x from the right hand side, so 66x minus 50x, that will leave me with 16x. And then to work out x, I need to find how many times 16 goes into 128. Uh, well, probably the easiest way to do that is just to try multiplying 16 by different numbers. Well, 16 times 10, that's 160, that's too much. Um, and uh, so I need to try something less than 10. So maybe I'll try eight. So 16 times eight, six times eight is 48. And carry the four, one times eight is eight plus four, that's 12. So yes, 16 times eight is 128. So I can say that x must equal eight. All right, so now I have a value for x. 
I can work out the total number of counters and the number of yellow counters. And remember the question was asking, work out the probability of choosing a yellow counter. That will allow me to work out the probability. So let's firstly work out how many yellow counters there are. So there are 3x minus 1, so the yellow counters was 3x minus 1. And substitute 8 into that expression. So 8 times 3 is 24 minus 1, and 24 minus 1, that's 23. So I know I have 23 yellow counters. And I can also work out the total number of counters. So the total number of counters, remember we simplified that to 2 plus 6x. So 2 plus 6x, if we substitute 8 into that, 8 times 6 is 48, so we get 2 plus 48, and we get 50. So I have the total number of yellow counters and the total counters overall. So the probability of picking a yellow counter must be the number of yellow counters divided by the total, which is 23 over 50. So that's my final answer for that question. In terms of GCSEs, I'd say this is probably a grade seven or eight question, and maybe four marks or possibly five marks, but I'd say maybe not quite that many. So probably a four mark question, grade seven or eight level. The second question I'm going over is quite difficult. Uh, I'd say if you really want to challenge yourself, pause the video and have a go. It might take you some time, uh, but let's have a go at going through it now. So, the second question says, Mr. Lucky plays two games. The two games are game A and game B. Playing game A and playing game B are independent events. The probability that Mr. Lucky wins both games is 9 out of 25. The probability that Mr. Lucky wins game B is 4 times greater than the probability of him losing game A. Find the probability that Mr. Lucky wins only one of the two games he plays. You must show full workings. Okay, so a lot of information to take in there. I'd say the key points are we're told the probability that he wins both games is 9 out of 25. And so that can be written as, let's say, the probability of winning A multiplied by the probability of winning B. Remember when we have two events and they both happen, we can multiply them. Uh, so this is 9 out of 25. And we're also told the probability that he wins game B is four times greater than losing game A. So what that means is, if we were to write it down in a, an equation, is the probability of winning B equals the probability of losing A multiplied by 4, right? So if this is 4 times greater, I need to multiply this one by 4 to make them equal. And the first thing I'll say about this is if the probability of winning B is 4 times the probability of losing A, there's a minimum value that that could have. Remember, probabilities always must be less than 1. So I can say that the probability of winning B, uh, the probability of winning B cannot be greater than 1. So the probability of losing A must be less than or equal to a quarter, right? Because if this was a quarter, a quarter times 4 equals 1, and that's the maximum value of winning game B. Uh, if this was greater than a quarter, anything higher than a quarter times 4 is more than 1, which isn't possible. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that there for a minute, and uh, I'm going to work with these two equations here. And what this allows me to do is to actually set up some simultaneous equations. Uh, and what I want is an equation all in terms of one of these probabilities, and then I can solve for one of the probabilities. So the first thing I'll say is that the probability of losing A equals 1 minus the probability of winning A. Right, there's two events, two possibilities. They must add up to one. So one of the probabilities is one minus the other probability. So therefore, the probability of winning B equals four. Uh, substitute that in to this equation. 
So this is going to be four times one minus the probability of winning A. I've taken this equation here and substituted this in for the probability of losing A. Okay, and um, here I'm going to introduce a variable so I can say the probability of winning A equals X. That's going to make it a little bit easier to manage. And uh, because the probability of winning B equals four times one minus the probability of winning A, substitute that into this equation, this first equation I wrote, and I end up with, if I let that equal X, I end up with X times four times one minus X equal to nine over 25. And after all that, I've ended up with an equation with one unknown, which I'm going to be able to solve. Um, so all of these brackets aren't really necessary. All this means is 4x times 1 minus x equal to 9 over 25. By the way, if you're confused how I got to this step, uh, just take a careful look at the equations I've set up and have a careful look at where I've substituted certain things in. Uh, so I've taken this probability of winning A and made this first equation in terms of the probability of winning A using the second equation. Okay, so, um, so hopefully that's clear how I've got to this step so far. And uh, so now I have 4x, bracket x minus x, 1 minus x equals 9 over 25. If I divide both sides by 4, I end up with x times 1 minus x, and dividing a fraction by 4 is the same as multiplying by a quarter, so over here it's kind of like 9 on 25 times a quarter, so 9 times 1 is 9 and 25 times 4 is 100, so this ends up to be 9 on 100 on the right hand side, and then expand these brackets out, so this is going to be x minus x squared equals 9 on 100, and then I want to rewrite this as a traditional quadratic equation equal to zero. So subtract that nine or 100 from the left-hand side uh, and rewrite the x squared as the first term. So this is going to be minus x squared plus x minus nine on 100 equals zero. Also, I can divide by negative one to make it a bit more easier as well. So this is, this is going to be x squared minus x plus nine on 100 equals zero. And now I have a quadratic which I can factorize. And you might say, well, this last number here is a fraction. How can I factorize a fraction? It's not something you regularly do, so it might initially seem difficult, but actually I need two factors of nine on 100 that make minus one. And if you think about it for a little bit, it's actually not that hard. Uh, two factors of nine on 100 are nine on 10 times one on 10. They, if I multiply those, I get nine on 100. Also, if I subtract them, minus nine on 10 minus one on 10, that will equal negative one. So they're the two factors I'm going to use here. 9 on 10 and 1 on 10, so I get x minus 1 on 10 times x minus 9 on 10 equal to 0. So therefore, x equals 1 on 10 or x equals 9 on 10. Okay, remember what x equaled. x was the probability of winning a. And uh, well, how can I decide which value to use? Remember, I also said the probability of losing A had to be less than or equal to a quarter. So that means that the probability of winning A cannot be one over 10. It wouldn't make sense. So the probability of winning A must equal nine on 10. So therefore, I can also say the probability of losing A, remember they have to add up to one, so the probability of losing A will be one on 10. All right, I'll ask you to pause there, see if you can work out the probability of winning B and the probability of losing B. Uh, so we can go back to this equation here, the probability of winning B equals the probability of losing A times four. So I can say therefore the probability of winning B 
will be the probability of losing times 4, which is 1 on 10 times 4, which is 4 on 10. And therefore, the probability of losing B will be the of 4 on 10. So they need to add to 1. So therefore, the probability of losing B must be 6 on 10. Okay, I have all my probabilities. That's actually most of the hard work over, but there's one more critical step which we need to answer the question. The question says, remember, find the probability that Mr. Lucky wins only one of the two games he plays. Now, this is where some people trip up. Because to find the probability of winning only one of the games, you might think, well, it's the probability of winning A or the probability of winning B. But actually, that's two separate events. So what we need to consider here is the probability of losing A and the probability of losing B. So let's go ahead and write some of this down. So what we need to get, so what we're looking for is, so what we're looking for is the probability of only winning one game and this is going to be the probability of winning A and the probability of losing B. So that's one option. Or we could have the probability of winning B and the probability of losing A. A key point, these are two events. Remember, if you win A, you must lose B, and if you win B, you must lose A. It's not enough to say it'll be the probability of winning A or the probability of winning B. You must also include this losing aspect as well uh, because that's a separate probability which you need to include. So if we rewrite this, this is going to be the probability of winning A, which we know is 9 out of 10. And because we are also losing B, we need to multiply that together. So the probability of losing B is 6 on 10. Or we could have the next one, so we add them together. So we have the probability of winning B, which is 4 on 10, times the probability of losing A, which is 1 on 10. Uh, so we multiply those because they happen together as well. Okay, so now all we need to do is solve this. Uh, 9 times 6, that's 54 on 10 times 10 is 100, plus 4 times 1 is 4 on 10 times 10, which is 100. And now I have the same denominator, so I can add the numerators. 54 plus 4 is 58 over 100. And that's the final answer for the probability that he only wins one of the two games he plays, 58 on 100. Again, as I said, a difficult problem. How did you go with this one? Did you stumble on any of the points? Did you get the correct answer? Let me know in the comments. And finally, I'll give you the problem that I won't go through in this video. Uh, so here's the problem. Uh, it says, there are six blue sweets in a bag. There are N red sweets in the same bag. There are more than 10 sweets in the bag. Fred takes a sweet out of the bag and eats it. He takes another sweet out and eats it. The probability of eating one blue sweet and one red sweet is a half. How many red sweets are there? Uh, so you can have a go at this. Leave your answers in the comments and I'll uh, maybe shout out the ones that are correct in the next video. Uh, you'll notice this is similar to one of the problems I've done in another video. So if you want to use that as a clue, maybe it's quite a similar method to solving this problem as that question in the other video, if you've seen it. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more content. And again, leave your answers to this question in the comments so I can check those out. Always love to hear people's comments and what they think of the videos. So let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.